Hi folks, today I'm at the Sculpture Garden near the Basilica in Mönchengladbach, Germany. Seemed like a nice location for me to go on a little rant about religious extremists back in my homeland, not here of course. If you're new here, this is where I should probably explain I'm an American living in Germany for a long, long time. I rant about that and a couple other things here on my channel. Welcome! But today, as I already stated, I plan on ranting a little bit about, well, an uproar in America right now. Right now in America, it would seem that some people in power are ignoring science, fact, statistics, reality, and at the same time, trying to force their religious beliefs onto others. And it's rightfully causing an uproar. And I'm here to join in on that. Because I got some hypocrisy I want to point out. Let's get into it. Right, so there's a big uproar in America because recently some documents were leaked showing some Supreme Court justices seem to have some plans and want to overturn Roe versus Wade, a woman's right to abortion in America. These religious extremists think they have the right to make medical decisions about a woman's body and they call themselves pro-life. I wish to make the argument today that they, well they, are anything but pro-life. You see these folks, these are the kind of folks that like to claim that their God is the only God and they think that that gives them the right to push their so-called pro-life opinions onto everybody else. So let's start with their God. Shall we? I mean, if you go by their own holy books, their God, well, their God killed a lot of babies. Their God sent bears to murder children, killed all the firstborn sons of Egypt, commanded some guy named Joshua to kill all the children of Jericho. This is their God. The same one that was apparently sleeping through the Holocaust and every other atrocious tragedy and atrocity caused by mankind throughout the ages in this messed up world. What are we even talking about, your God? And can we just talk for a second about this world that these so-called pro-lifers, they want to bring these babies into, they want to force these babies into? Can we talk about this world in America that they're doing this in? Because I just feel like if you look closely at it, it doesn't feel so much like these people are really so much pro-life as they are just forced birth. And let's just talk about forced birth in a country like America that has the highest maternal mortality rate compared to other countries in the developed world. In America, more than two women die of childbirth each day. Do you even know about the struggle of working moms in America? If you're lucky, maybe you get 12 weeks, 12 weeks off after giving birth to a baby and having a newborn baby to care for. And remember, I said maybe, and don't forget that in America, paternity leave, the father taking off, well that's just pretty much still ridiculed and not compensated. America, land of frequently inaccessible mental health care and health care in general. It doesn't sound like these so-called pro-lifers are really setting these babies up for any kind of decent life full of human dignity and such. What about their lives after the forced birth? Forced birth in a land with little to no existing social safety net to assist these mothers with these forced births. That's not pro-life. That's pro-birth. Pro-forced birth. Forcing those babies to be born in America where 30% of the homeless population are families. In 2020, 4.3 million American children had no health care. Also in 2020, 11.6 million children lived in poverty. Basic education is subpar. Higher education is for the wealthy or people willing to go into debt for the rest of their damn lives. Clearly these so-called pro-lifers are not pro-dignity in your life after forced birth. Yeah, pro-life my ass. These same people that are claiming they're saving babies, they back wars that drop bombs on babies in other lands. They have children in cages because they crossed a border wanting a better life. Pro-life and yet all those wars keep going on. I mean, post 9-11, wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, and Pakistan caused over 387,000 violent civilian deaths. And yes, 
there were children in those numbers, even babies. But since it seems that that country and their war policies, they seem to have a total disregard for the lives of people of other lands, especially if those lands have oil or brown-skinned people, why don't we look at how pro-life they are in regards to their own folks and their little war activities? You know, the Civil War killed over 600,000 Americans. And U.S. casualties in World War I were over 6,300,000. In World War II, almost 300,000 Americans died. In the Korean War, there were over 36,000 dead. Vietnam, over 58,000. Gulf War, somewhere around 300. Afghanistan killing over 2,000 U.S. soldiers, with more than 20,000 seriously wounded. Iraq War, over 4,000, more than 30,000 seriously wounded. Those are U.S. soldier casualties. Those soldiers were all somebody's baby and they died for what? People at the top make me sick. When you look at these people sent to die by the same government, now taking private medical rights away from approximately half of their people, I'm just saying, it really doesn't look, again, so much pro-life. In fact, I would argue if you look at it that way, it doesn't look so much like you're trying to preserve life as much as you're possibly trying to preserve future dead soldiers for your wars. I mean, how many of those soldiers were just kids that just wanted a decent life? And I know from my own personal experience, I know from talking to many soldiers that quite a few of them, they take that job just because they want a decent living. They want health care and they want to get a decent education. And that, that is an option they're willing to take growing up in America. And the government is like, yeah, we'll give you a good education and health care if you survive. I'm just saying, you know, it's difficult to really point out what each individual pro-lifer's motivation is. But seriously, as I've already said, in my opinion, it is clearly not about preserving life. Don't call yourself a pro-lifer. It's about control and forcing your views, your beliefs onto other people. The only two people that should be directly involved in any, any medical procedure done on my body are me and my doctor. The audacity and the hypocrisy of what is going on in America right now makes me sick. To force a woman to carry a child, give birth to a child that maybe she's not mentally, financially, emotionally, she's not ready to do it. That's abusive. But then to force them to do that in a country that would rather spend their money on bombing other countries rather than invest that money into good education and health care, taking care of their own people, rather than providing a real social safety net set up to provide families that are at risk. It's just cruel, the society that you're forcing these people to give birth into. Forcing a woman who can acknowledge that she's not ready for this surprise in a country with no real social safety net. You can be on a real quick path to poverty in America. There's plenty of tent cities there to prove my point. And I'm saying, it's just cruel. Don't call yourself a religious person. I feel like these people at the top that are making these decisions, they have no clue. Because the people at the top in America that make these sort of decisions, they are privileged people. They have no clue what it's like for the common man in America. Let me tell you something, I was 19 when I became a single mother. I had my family to help me, but I needed assistance. And the U.S. government, it kind of blew a few crumbs at me. Crumbs in the way of embarrassing coupons for milk and cheese, not diapers, not formula. The U.S. government did provide me with my son's first vaccinations. I was able to go drive to some scummy inner city clinic. But I had no health care on my kid. I couldn't afford it, even though I was working quite a bit. I mean, I was working like six to seven days a week, more than 40 hours a week, but still just barely making ends meet, living in a trailer. I was barely getting by and I was scared shitless about not just my future, but my son's future. And the second that our feet stepped on German soil and we moved here, our lives improved. That's besides the point. I'm just saying, it's really pissing me off that the same people that have created the hard society that America can be if you don't have money, they have the balls to call themselves pro-life. I mean. Besides a woman admitting that she's, she's not ready for this, there's other things that need to be considered here that make this all cruel. This horrendous act by the religious extremists that are in the U.S. Supreme Court could end up putting women, for example, with ectopic pregnancies, miscarriages, 
in a whole lot of danger and a whole lot of trouble. And with that information, I'm sure you can imagine the horrendous situation it's going to put a woman in when she was forced into that situation. Maybe even by her own damn father. It's sick. As sick as these religious extremists that want to call themselves pro-life in America. The last people that should be making any sort of medical decisions about any human's body are people that deny science and take their holy books as literal. We need to evolve people. Let's go forward. Not backwards like they seem to be doing in America. I mean, I looked up what the rules are here in Germany for this situation and I mean, I don't find them oppressive and I mean, from what I just looked at real quick, they seem pretty reasonable but I gotta say at the same time, I don't see all the nut jobs here in Germany like you see in America. These monsters that go and scream religious things or even worse call women whores when they go to these clinics seeking help and advice because they're in a sticky situation that they weren't prepared for, they're not ready for, and they're looking for help from a medical professional. And then some dude with a book believing in an invisible sky god wants to stand there and berate these people and make their lives more difficult. Thank you for letting me rant today. It feels good to get it all out. I'd appreciate it if you click that little like button down there consider subscribing or if you want to support the channel don't forget you can always click that join button and become one of my beloved members and get access to member only videos and special emojis before i leave the little sculpture garden here i need to go show some love to my favorite sculpture real quick but until i see you again i hope that you're over there taking care of yourself